that maybe over time it would be but it wasn't sudden like it was for these other things related like uh, uh, diabetic neuropathies and her that kind of thing mm -hmm. anything else sir other questions Jack Slovak um, who's your telomere lab spectrocell Pete in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done any experimental work using your devices to grow new structures such as I have a problem with missing teeth mm -hmm. and um, yeah. I've been interested in using um, stem cells, the, the research doing stem mm -hmm. cells to regrow tooth root structures. Have you done any work along that line? Not necessarily with or without stem cells, but... Well, yes. Actually, we had a, a, an unusual uh, incident some years ago. Um, we live on a golf course, and uh, the wildlife around there somehow figured out that we can help them. So whenever they have a health problem, they <laughs> come out by our back porch and start making noise and <laughs> until somebody goes over and flips on the machine. And yeah, the interesting thing is that <laughs> as soon as we think they're well, they start walking away. But to get to answer your question in a better way, one, these are sandhill cranes, among other things. But we had a sandhill crane that had bad luck. It's been some years ago. And it either had a trap or a gator that took off its foot at the ankle. And of course, sticking that in the mud every day, you can imagine it might get infected. <laughs> the stub, I mean. Well, she uh, also developed pneumonia. We even named her, called her uh, Orphan Annie after a while. She hung around so much. And uh, we came home from church one day, and here she was sitting. They don't sit down very much because they're dogs and cats. So, you know, get them. But she was sitting on the back porch with her feet up like this, and here's the good one over here, and here's the stub on this side. Well, it had been raining, and uh, she got up and walked away. I have pictures of this if you really get curious. And we've got tracks. We have tracks in the, in the mud of where she's starting to regenerate toes, if you will, or foot. And as most of us know, the high-level animals like that, it doesn't happen. Nor, well, it doesn't happen, period. But it did here. So that's not a real good answer to your question, but... Um, and we have quite a few dentists using it also. I haven't heard from them what you're asking, but um, it might work. You know, no reason that it wouldn't, I guess, is probably my best answer. Yeah. Hi, uh, Dr. Ben Johnson from Evergreen, Colorado. And uh, my question was on the laser work you were doing on the bone, and you were running it through glucose mm -hmm. and xylocaine. Right. Did you try it without those substrates? And do what? Why did you choose glucose and xylocaine? Okay, good question. Um, I didn't want to belabor you a lot of detail, but uh, there is a therapeutic uh, modality referred to as neurotherapy uh, that's been around a long time, and it uh, balances the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and we, in fact, in fact, we received an award from the South American physicians for contribution to humanity for this, for this, uh, uh, this method because they no longer needed needles to inject the medicines. The other side, that's the first, <laughs> that's the xylocaine. The second side, had to do with the glucose 
and the glucose again is another therapeutic modality uh, that normally was injected and uh, it will tighten ligaments, it will shorten ligaments and there isn't any way to do that, certainly not physical therapy and surgically it doesn't work very well, I tried it years ago. But by injecting it with glucose you can tighten ligaments and we were able to do both at the same time with the two machines and that's, that's the reason we did it that way. But I can give you more detail if you want more detail, but you know the rest of the people don't care about it, I don't think. But don't know if that answers your question, but that's why we did it. And she was able to walk quite soon <laughs> afterwards. Anything else? Uh, I, t my name's Tim Conley, and I have kind of a two-part question on the gentleman with the hip surgery. Mm -hmm. First, why did he respond so, uh, I wasn't clear, was he being treated before the surgery? Six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the day of the surgery, I, I'm thinking, you know, all the incisions and such, how did he deal with that? How, how did that respond? Could you go into a little detail on that, He's, please? He just started walking. <laughs> um, his, as I alluded to, his wife had Alzheimer's, and so they had been working for six months with one of our units to see if they could be helped. So he, and the, the unit does the whole house. It's not, it's not just one spot, but the whole house, even the neighbor's houses actually, we've seen that. Uh, so he'd been prepped, if you will, for six months. He was, uh, but he was not the ideal candidate, I mean, uh, no, nothing against him, but he was nowhere near anything like an athlete. He was just wasn't, <laughs> okay. but he certainly got a performance like one, you yeah. know. Does that answer your question? Well, uh, uh, the incisions, were they, did they heal quickly or was it just stitched up? But to do a hip replacement, there's a lot of cutting and poking. Well, that's what you would think, <laughs> <laughs> unless you've done a few hundred. And what we try to do, there's several approaches to a hip replacement, and we usually just spread the, cut the skin of course, but spread the muscle, do the replacement, that come back together, and these days they glue it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly right. Sterile super glue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Charles, uh, yes, Dr. Crosby. Okay. Thank you very much.